Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at this month's Smart Art box. This is the January box, and let's have a peek of what is inside. By the way, this video is brought to you by SmartArtBox.com. You can check out the links in the video description and find out how you can get your box of art supplies delivered to your house every month. They ship to most countries worldwide, so check them out. It's a lot of fun. And it's always fun to get a surprise in the mail. Better than a bill. Uh, so what we have first is a brochure. Every Smart Art box comes with a um, kind of a pamphlet that walks you through some projects. It walks you through the supplies you're going to get. And this month is colored pencils. Um, I really like this brochure, especially if you're homeschooling or you just want to try different things. You're not that familiar with supplies. There's a project on the back um, that is different than what I'll show you how to do today. So it gives you a little more bang for your buck. And in here we have some goodies. We have, I am going to picture the pronunciation of this word, Brunzeal, Brunzeal, um, colored pencils. These are expression colors out of 12. I've never used this brand before. Ooh, this is a wonky looking pencil. Look at that. It's like, <laughs> that must have been made from a crooked branch. I've never seen that before. Um, but I'm curious to try these out. Made in Holland, it says. So let's set those aside. We have a pencil sharpener. This is by the Coombe brand, and I do like their sharpeners. Um, I was so bummed because I had another one, a long point one, and I had lost the little cover that holds the shavings. So that's nice. There is a, like, um, a perfection eraser meant for erasing colored pencils or ink. There is a fine tech blending pencil. This is for kind of smooshing your colors together so you can blend them without solvent. And finally, we have a Fabriano, oh, I love Fabriano. Fabriano Venice book drawing paper, 48 sheets, 90 pound. Check this out. Wow, listen. That is some thick paper. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to use this. I love Fabriano. Um, I've used their watercolor paper for years, so I'm excited to try the drawing paper. In fact, a lot of people like to use their watercolor paper for color pencil work because it is really good for that. Um, and I think it'd be fun to kind of do maybe some macaroons. We'll see if we can do macaroons with this. Um, I always like to see if I can make kind of pastel uh, colors with my colored pencils. So I'm going to zoom in and lay out my workspace and then we will get to work. I'm going to start out by sketching my macaroons and I'm going to make them pretty big so I have room for blending. So I am just going to sketch uh, with this red for this. It's going to be a pinkish macaroon. I am going to sketch with yellow for the yellow macaroon. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. That's It's awfully light to do that in yellow, but I don't want to have any uh, colors that I'll have a hard time dealing with later. And I'm going to use this green for the green macaroon here. I'll put a link to the reference photo that I used in the video description in case you want to print that out or open it up on your computer and work right along with me. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is lay in a base color by using the pencils on their side. These came pre-sharpened so I didn't have to do anything. Uh, the paper has a really nice tooth which means I think I'll be able to do a lot of layering which is really necessary if you don't have many colors. I'm going to keep this tutorial real time so if that's just too darn long for you, um, if you look at the YouTube player and the bottom of the screen there's something that looks like a gear and what you can do is um, click on that gear and you can speed me up to like double speed and I'll sound like a deranged chipmunk but you will get that tutorial done a little bit faster. Now I'm kind of going in the opposite direction and I'm using little circles. That's just to kind of get rid of some of those lines. Um, you know you probably I'm, 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 I'm purposely trying to go a little quickly just to uh, um, be mindful of your time. I just basically want to make sure I get an even coating of color without too many lines here. I'm going to do the same with the uh, with the red and the yellow. This paper feels really nice. I'll be curious to experiment with it um, using my watercolors because something tells me that how thick that paper is. It just feels nice and crispy and thick. I think it would be really good with my watercolors. So um, I, it just feels like it'd be a really nice art journal actually. And I've never used this. I've used Fabriano, but I've never used this sketchbook before. And I just love the artwork on it. I feel like it's it's very luxurious. And I was quite surprised to find it um, in my smart art box. They do uh, every month give you full size supplies and brand name supplies. 
um, but oftentimes they're you know it's they're not super duper expensive because you know the boxes are around forty nine dollars so obviously the contents of the box can't be more than what you know what you're paying for it obviously because they've got to get it together and everything um, so I was really pleased to find this sketchbook find something new that I haven't tried before and also pencils that I haven't tried before I love it I love trying new things and that's why I enjoy getting my smart art box every month um, especially if it's something I've never used even if I don't like it I still have fun trying it all right so what are we we're, we're at five minutes and we've made three colored ovals okay welcome to welcome to kindergarten folks <laughs> now we are going to do a little bit of uh, of drawing here I am going to, I'm just grabbing this orange one um, because I don't want to use black basically uh, I want to get some de definition in this yellow guy here um, without really but I don't want black um, maybe I'll use some black for some definition later but I don't want it yet so um, I want to get a little bit of definition of the uh, cakey part of the macaroon, the foot of the macaroon. It's just kind of like this um, textured cakey bit. I'm going to get that in there. Um, just going to very gently define the edges. I'll be glazing over with yellow. A glazing is when you just kind of color over something to alter its color and it's transparent, which pencils usually are. I know I haven't swatched these out, so I don't know how transparent or opaque they are, but luckily there's a white in the kit, so that's gonna be really helpful for me. Um, and I think I made that top piece a little big, but that's that's all right. I'm gonna leave a, like a little bit of a gap and we're gonna get the bottom foot of the macaroon. I think I probably will end up using a little bit of black towards the end, but I'm going to be really careful with it and use it towards the end so I've got a coating of colored pencil under where I'm working. And what that's going to do is it's it almost acts like those those lower layer layers of the pastel will almost act like a resist so they don't get more than I bargained for. I don't get too much color. So I'm using this orange as a shading color because you got to be really, if I was using a set of 72 pencils, this is not how I would approach this sketch. I'm approaching this um, very differently because I'm going to have to layer colors to mix colors. So that's, that's, uh, that's why I'm doing that. I want you to kind of keep that in mind. As you're watching here, you could pick more, um, you could pick colors that were a little bit more what you want right off the bat if you had a bigger set. Okay, that will come down a little bit more. All right, so I've got a basic color in there. I don't want to finish that, get anything too finished at this point. I want to just kind of skip around. Now this one, we've got the smooth cake part coming down and around. We're looking down on it a little bit more. It's tipped towards us a little bit. It's up. So you know it's a little bit bigger than that yellow one too. So I'm gonna bring it out on this side a little bit so that makes sense. And hopefully I didn't make that line too dark to begin with. I'm just gonna shade it in a little bit. Actually, let's try this eraser. Maybe we can just let, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, it's coming right up. Oh, sweet, okay, nice. That's why they put that in the kit. And it's got a little brush. Brush, brush, brush. Okay, so we've got the cream in the center. It's kind of coming out a little bit there. And taper that in. Actually, so we got the we actually have this uh textured part coming out like that. I've actually got to re readjust. And then there's the cream in the center, and then we got this textured part showing up like that. And I think I'll be using some brown, maybe some purple to shade in there. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that in there right off the bat. Oh, that's going to work out nice. They're layering really well, which is good. Um, I think it's a combination of the toothy paper and these pencils. Not sure if these are wax or oil. They feel like they're probably wax. They're not super waxy though. Um, they're pretty smooth. I hope I don't regret choosing this as my is my uh, example here because it might be take a while might be a speed pain after all okay so now I'm gonna get this top bit of this macaroon in and get our little cakey part or the foot as it's called and get 
this foot on this side of the cake. They're like little mini whoopie pies. Well, no, they're not actually, but they look like little whoopie pies. Do you know what a whoopie pie is? Is that just a main thing? It's like two chocolate cake pieces with um, like frosting in the middle. They're very tasty. I've made them vegan before. Very good. It's like a good cake sandwich. It's like a cake frosting sandwich. Very fattening, very delicious. And I'm doing scribbles to get some texture in here. Do the same thing over here. Scribble in some texture. And I'm going to shade this edge. I'm using long ovals to shade. This color pencil is slow going, I should, I should mention. It's not a, a fast medium. Nope. Adding in some of this darker green, which is a cooler green. That's nice for a shadow. The key is lots of layering, because if you're layering, layering your colors, um, you're going to still see the, the color underneath. So you start off with a color that's most like the object that you're going for, and then you keep layering on colors as you go. And since you can still see those colors underneath, they mix, right? And since they're mixing, they're blending, and then you don't end up with like, ooh, that color doesn't go, because you get that optical blending, and it, you don't get the clashing so much. You get everything starts to influence each other, and that's how it gets, um, how it gets that nice uh, kind of balanced look. This book, I would say it's like six by eight. In case you're wondering how big it is. And I'm gonna start adding some, you know what? Shoot, let's see how powerful that eraser is because I feel like this macaroon should be layering over it a little bit. That should come over like that. Looks like a little hamburger. It's like between a hamburger and a whoopie pie. I prefer a whoopie pie. Or a good veggie burger. It's, you know, it's layering really well. I have to be careful not to get too much color in there. I'm going to need to go over with white to make these pastel, these shades pastel. But look at that, it's layering really well. And I think that eraser might be handy too if you end up clogging the tooth. If you end up clogging the tooth of your paper and you need to uh, um, to bring back some tooth, I'm scribbling the yellow in here. Look, these are really vibrant colors. Gosh, I hope I can uh, pastel them down a little bit. Probably shouldn't have uh, chosen something so vibrant for a demo with, uh, with pencils. So now I'm actually going to bring some of this yellow over here because that would cast some color, but also because this green is really uh, yellowy. You don't have to worry about misplacing your color or deciding, oh, what color did I use there again? Because you're, you know, we're using the same, you know, we only have 12 colors to pick from. So it kind of, uh, it kind of gets rid of that worry. Now this is like a, like a corally peach color. I'm going to use this on top of this macaroon and try to get some blending. be a nice stage before why don't know if they these um these colors have numbers but they do not have names if they had names they'd probably be in german or dutch i don't know they wouldn't be in english i bet you all right i'm gonna try some white here and see what i can get as far as highlight Ooh, that doesn't want to stick i should have probably put this in earlier. Oh boy, so I don't know how I'm gonna fare with this because I can't seem to get that to stick. But let's try our let's try our eraser trick. Let's see. Whoops, that's a blender. That's not an eraser. It's falling apart folks. We're gonna try erasing. Oh that eraser's working alright. Look at that. It's pulling up all that stuff. I'm gonna have to let's see let's see if the eraser sharpens well. It's just like we're just having so much fun here. We're experimenting together. All right, let's try this. Oh, okay, okay, this is working. Get all that waxy crud off there. It works pretty well. Now let's go over with the white. Let's try it on its side. 
I think I might have bit off more than I can chew in a reasonable amount of time with this project, but we will see. We might be taking a more impressionistic look at macaroons rather than a realistic look before we're done. Let's try that up here too. Ooh, it is blending our yellow. I, I don't think I'll be using the blending pencil because too much for this project because um, all the blending I need to do, I also need to make things lighter. So I think I will be relying on my white an awful lot here. That creamy center in there. Do that down here too. And this will actually, though, when you are using the white really firmly like this, you do end up burnishing, which means you um, you kind of seal stuff down in the paper. So keep that eraser handy for um, for if you need to kind of remove some color. It's easier to remove some first and then add the white, I think. But the white will blend what you have, and that's handy too. Experiment, I guess, is the moral of the story. I'm going to use the edge of this red pencil and do my little circles here under this yellow macaroon. Actually, you know what? I feel like I don't have very much control doing that. So I'm using very little pressure. I want to define the bottom of the orange macaroon by adding shadow to the red macaroon. Of course, I want it to be darkest up near the uh, yellow one because that's where it's going to be casting most of the shadow. And then I'm going to use less pressure as I go away. And I am doing larger circles because I um, I want to cover a little more ground and also this is a round object so I want to make sure my strokes are going to be going in the the you know direction kind of agreeing with the contours here. So I'm pulling that that shade down with some kind of C strokes here. Hopefully my hand's not in the way. You can kind of see how I brought it around there. And I'm also thinking that I should have kind of like a little bit of a rounder shadow there from my macaroon on the top. And I guess, you know, just move your pencil around so that it's comfortable and you're getting the marks that you want. So sometimes when you're right up tight against that edge, you know, use it on the use the pencil on the tip so that you can get that control. And then as you're you're coming out further, you can use the edge of it so that you end up getting the uh, getting the coverage that you want. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow over to this side here, coming around the edge to help define it. And I'm going to grab some purple. We haven't used that yet. I'm going to be layering that over here to also add some shadow. And also that purple is going to look nice right up next to that yellow. It's going to make the yellow seem a little bit more colorful. It's going to give it a little more liveliness. I'm not going over the yellow, I'm just going on that red underneath. I try to kind of stick away from the browns and the blacks when I'm doing really freshly colored things like the macaroons or if I was doing fruit or flowers. I'm just kind of kind of save those for the end if I need them. And I can go in here in the frosting. Of course you could have brown frosting, you could have chocolate frosting. And I'm just giving some shadow there. And I'm just going to do maybe a little bit here on the bottom. And I'm going to do the scribbling texture here on the ice, the uh, foot of the macaroon. Just to give me that texture. Now if you had some uh, baby oil or Goo Gone or um, Gamzol paint thinner, something like that, you could go ahead and smooth out those colors a lot and get it super silky smooth and get a really beautiful blend. Uh, but I was hesitant to do that where um, this is a you know, I like to, with a smart art box, I like it to be kind of like my first impressions with these products, and I try to stick with what's in the box for the most part, unless I know it's a common thing that everyone would have on hand. This purple is going to be a nice color to shadow the green. Just keep your pressure really light so you're just putting down a little bit of, of color. And add some to the middle as well. Put 
that's going to be layered up to make a shadow, but I just wanted to get that in there. Some down here to define. And I think we could probably could use a little bit of the purple over here on the yellow one as well, just for a little bit of a shadow. Colors are very vibrant. You get nice pure colors in this set at least, so layering is really good. Now I feel like I could take some green and add it up here because actually to several areas of this yellow mac room because it would grab some of that color from the the green one. It would just kind of reflect, bounce, bounce the color around. And I'm gonna add some into the shadow up here. So we just keep building up layers. Now before we get too much further, I want to have some sort of shadow on the table. I think I'm gonna to have to go in very, very lightly with the black for this, because I don't really have, uh, I don't have any grays in this set, and um, I think I'm just gonna start off with the black super light, and then add some of the colors from the macarons over them. Macarons, I guess, right? Macarons? Macarons are the coconut things. These are macarons. Macarons more fun to say. Sounds fancy. Macaroon. My dear, have you seen my macarons? The queen is coming for dinner. The queen is coming for tea and I must have my macarons. Now I'm going to grab some of these colors. We'll just do a little bit of green over here. A little bit of red. I'm not in love with those shadows. I've got to, I've got to admit, I'm not in love with those. I'm going to define the bottoms here. This would be a lot easier if you had more colors of pencils. I think, unless you're just very curious to, you know, to work with a really limited palette, uh, I would go with more, you know, I wouldn't use more colors per se, but I would use more appropriate colors. Colored pencil is one of those <laughs> mediums where it's really nice to have a big box to work from. So now I can go in and put some of my darkest darks in with the black, now that I've got enough color down that it's not going to overwhelm everything. I think this is going to be chocolate frosting in this one anyway. I don't know my macaroon bakery etiquette. I don't know if they put chocolate with fruit. I think they would. I think they'd put strawberry and chocolate. I'm not a fan of chocolate and fruit mixed up together. I'm not a big fan of chocolate, actually. I'm not, I don't really have a sweet tooth, to tell you the truth. I do like to, uh, I do like to paint sweets, though. Oh, shoot, what did I do that for? Let's see if, uh... If that will erase because it was really light. Oh yeah, it's hard to erase black right on that paper, but we'll survive. I do like the the definition I'm getting from the black. Just be careful because once that hits the raw paper, it's not gonna wanna let go too easily. definition there. I actually think I could use a little of this here on this this bottom macaroon. And let's grab some brown. We've used everything except for the two blues in the set. Add some brown there. I don't really like the look of that, but I think if I add some more of it up here in the cake part, it'll be all right. Especially to kind of define the smooth part of the macaroon with the foot of the macaroon. Macaron. That's better. I like that a lot better.
going to add some of that brown over here. And I'm going to go and get that soft shadow on the yellow. I think that's going to be my best option for shadow on this. And I think even down here on the red. Let's try that blender out and see how that works. That might give us a nice, uh, nice effect. Oh, it is blending everything together pretty well. It's really going to flatten down the tooth though, and I don't know if I'll be able to add much on top of that after doing that. And you can see I'm wiggling, jiggling my table because of how much, how much pressure that takes. But it does let us get a smoother um, appearance as it's mashing down our um, the tooth of our paper. And I'm really pushing with the white here. This is a lot of pressure. There, I actually am liking the way that's going out. Let me get some white in there. Let's try burnishing that. Getting that smooth look. <gasps> I don't know if I want to burnish this part or not. We'll give it a try. I'm scribbling though. I don't want to lose the texture. I just want to have it appear a little bit more solid. And now I can go in with a little bit more brown for the chocolate icing in this one. And I can accent that with a little bit of black. And maybe a little more brown. It's always darkest before the light, I find, with uh, with these <laughs> sub-colored pencil projects, especially if you are on a limited limited supply. I, I feel like it can look really bad um, until it starts to come together, and I feel like this is starting to come together, and I'm actually kind of proud of myself that I did this with these crazy bright primary colors. You know, to achieve something, uh, to render something in colors that are not at all like what you're trying to paint it is tricky so I'm, I'm liking it now I'm really kind of gotten a little a little uh, little oomph here I'm gonna try this blending pencil in the shadows on the table there I'm gonna see how that goes I think that that might work out pretty well hey look at that it's really blending that now as somebody who doesn't who has a lot of pencils for one thing I don't tend to use my blending pencil that much. If I am working um, on white paper, I'll usually use like um, some solvent, like Gamzol or um, odorless mineral spirits or Goo Gone or baby oil, whatever I happen to have. Uh, and if I'm working on colored paper, like toned tan paper, I'll tend to use um, the pencils really thickly. I'll use a lighter shade. I might use white for to, like to blend if I want to get it lighter and more highlighted. So uh, this has been a really fun learning experience for me because I am doing stuff that I typically wouldn't do because I have more supplies. And I think this is a really good lesson for me because um, you know a lot of a lot of folks are starting out and they don't have. The amount of supplies I do and especially if like you know you know smart art box is the first time you've had decent color pencils you know you might you want to be able to use them you want to be able to learn how to how to get the most out of those supplies you have or, or maybe you finally splurged on a set of um, really nice colored pencils and they were you know since they were so pricey you only could get like a set of 12 or 24 well this is going to show you those techniques that you can use them for oh I'm happy with that that is a 
it's coming along. It's coming along. Um, I'm going to add a little more shadow up on that top bun here. I call it a bun because it looks like a hamburger bun, doesn't it? Uh, I'm just going in with that brown. I'm not going to know anything I do to an area that's been burnished is going to be very subtle because um, I flattened on that paper. I filled in the tooth. It's not going to accept that much media, but that also gives me a little bit of freedom because I know that um, anything I do is going to be really subtle. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna pull so much off of the pencil. But I really like how this this blender really forces those colors together and looks gives it that nice, soft, smooth look that I'm going for. I want those two edges to be touching the uh, red and green macaron. And I'm going to try blending this as well. I want to get a little more pencil on there. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this light. See, now I'm getting excited. You can tell, you can tell because I'm talking fast. It's like, oh boy, here we go. Now we're in the gripping conclusion of this project that's taken us like three weeks to color, it feels like. It probably feels like more like that for you, honestly. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this real time because everyone tells me they'd rather have real time tutorials. And then about five minutes ago, I was thinking, oh, I got to speed paint this because it is just... Both the time I was talking about the, the queen coming for dinner, I was like, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to wrap this up. Uh, do this as a speed paint, but I think I'm gonna leave it real time. You have to let me know in the comments below uh, Which you prefer? Oh shoot. I'm erasing. I meant to be blending Let's put some more color down there. Shall we? Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. I Gotta remember that thing with the bigger rate the thing with a big brush on the end is an eraser Yeah, let's go with a little bit more what yeah, that's right these pencils feel pretty hard. I they're very slow wearing. I've only I think I've only had a sharp in one color since we started. Um, the blender the blender seems to have like a I think it's like a waxy pumice or pumice, and because you can kind of see it like kind of flaking off as you go, like you get this kind of sandy this is kind of sandy stuff. I think that's what it is. I think it's like a a pumice. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of that darker green. Just want to get this shadow in. I'm going to go with some yellow. Yeah, these are these are quite a firm pencil. They remind me of um, the Derwent Artists or the Soho pencil. Just kind of, you know, really really firm, but they do have plenty of color in there. They're not firm as in like you feel like you have to, you know, jam it through the paper to get some color to come off. They're firm like, like they're just not very waxy, like they're just a harder pencil. Uh, I think I'm going to use that dark green and go into this really dark separation area there. And get some texture in there, and I'm just gonna do scribbles. I think I'm gonna need some brown in there too because that's looking awfully bright. The brown will tone it down, and this brown seems to be a little bit of a reddish brown, which is uh, really tones down the green because red and green are opposites. Uh, and I think I'm gonna grab some. I think I'm gonna sharpen my white because I, um, I've worn it down so much on one side. These pencils are sharpening good. That's always a good mark when you're working with colored pencil. Sometimes you can't, you know, you can't sharpen a pencil. It just keeps breaking and it's so frustrating. And I'm going to grab some of that white here in the foot of this green macaron. And I'm going to use it to bl blend the heck out of the side. And then we'll go into the blender, see if we can get any more blending to happen. And actually, I might be able to pull in one of those blues that we haven't used yet, because I think, I feel like there's some blue light over on this side. Oh, that's a pretty color, isn't that? Oh boy. I kind of wish there was, um, these are made in Holland, by the way. Did I say that already? I think I probably did. <laughs> Even I will run out of things to say in a three hour coloring video. How long has it been? It's probably only been in 40 minutes. I don't know. 
I get very self-conscious about that. How long is how long is it taking me to color this? How long am I making these poor people on YouTube wait <laughs> to see this done? That's a pretty color. I think I'm gonna put some of this in the shadow. Cause I feel like you'd have a little bit of that cool blue around the edges. Maybe not that much, that's a little extreme, but. Oh, and we used our blender when we were doing our shadow before. Let's try that. That's why it doesn't want to integrate too well. It's like our macaroons are sitting in a soggy puddle of water. That's no good. We got that water. Oh, maybe it doesn't look that bad. You know what? You know what, what is nice. You know, you go, you step away. And you're working on a project like this, you step away from it, and you come back in like even just like five minutes, and it will look so much better because you're like, oh, hot mess. And then you go and you have a cup of tea or whatever, and you come back, and it's like, well, you know, that's okay. Besides, it's just a painting, it's just a drawing. The world's gonna keep spinning. It's only a piece of paper in your sketchbook. This is the first. This is the first page of this sketchbook though. You know, a little bit of pressure. Not a lot. I like this paper though. It's very robust. I don't feel like it's, with all that erasing and burnishing and stuff, it's not like acting like it's going to uh, rip or pill or anything. So I'll be very interested to see how it would do with watercolor. All right, I wanna try some burnishing up here, I think that's going to be really good. I want to get some white in there before I attempt it though. Let's just get that right in there. Now, we will grab, we'll get to sharpen this uh, burnisher. That's the thing, boy, I notice I am really, um, oh, this is one of those, um, oh, just, it's got two holes, but they're the same size, but one gives you a longer point, I think. I don't know. I'll have to investigate that more in the future. Not right now while I'm filming. I'm going to burnish that. Now I'm starting to feel like it's going to be a speed paint again. You know, you hit that, you hit that, uh, that groove where you're like, whoa, I am just cooking with fire. And then you're like, oh, nah, we're back to the drudgery again. Get one part of your picture almost done. And it's like, sweet, I'm almost done. And it's like, oh yeah, you get through two other macaroons here to deal with. Don't you hate it when you finish that first macaroon and then you got a bunch of other macaroons to handle? I've never actually had a macaroon or a macaron. I think they're made with eggs. All right, let's just do a little more burnishing over here. I will tell you that rendering something that is pastel with very bright color pencils is a challenge, but uh, nothing if not up for a challenge. And I picked this. I picked it. It was my choice. Can't complain about something made if it's your choice, right? Well, you can, I suppose, but nobody wants to hear that. Now let's see if I can get any more white to stick. Oh, but you know what? I got my eraser, so I can get more white to stick that way. Holy moly. This eraser is so dirty. <laughs> there we go. Because if I erase, then I can put more white pencil on. So even if the white of the paper isn't white enough, I can do more pencil. Yeah, I think the I think if you're on a limited supply like this, your eraser is going to be as important as any of your other tools, any of your other colors, because it is going to, you know, it's going to be like your white, you know, it's going to be like your pastel shade of everything. It's, you know, you just take out until you get back down to the color that you're going for. Look at that. I cannot believe that is not damaging that paper. I really like this paper. What is that called? Let's look at what, what is that again? Fabriano Venice book, drawing paper, 48 sheets. I'm going to have to look for that. That's pretty sweet. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to link you to the website to Smart Art and you can check that out and uh, find it for yourself. So now I'm just kind of thinking, okay, what else? What else do I need? What else can I add? I've got the tooth pretty well filled up. I can't, 
I can't do a ton here uh, on top of this. Um, so I'm going to do some little stippling to get those cakey, bits of cakey goodness. You know, they've got those little, what do we call it? It's just like the texture of cakiness is in here. Get that icing. Work on shadows. Shadows can't be too dark. This is, it's so tricky to shadow something that's pastel. It really is. A little more yellow. You can warm things up. I'm going to just put that yellow kind of in the shadow areas. Um, see if we're, where I might want the yellow over here. And we get some yellow down here because it's, it's kind of being reflected from the top maroon. Do some of the shadow too. Hmm, okay, I think what I'm gonna do is pause the video and I am going to just give this a second to simmer, just to think about, and then I'll come back, decide if I'm done, and we'll wrap this up. Okay, I think that I'm about to wrap stuff up here. I have uh, just gone in, I'm going in with some black, and this is just the very darkest points that I'm putting in here. I don't want to get, um, I don't want to get anything too dark because it is such a pastel picture, but there are some parts where I want just a little bit more definition and that's what I am doing here. If something does get a little too like black, I can go in over it with the color that kind of is local to the object that I'm rendering and glaze over it a little bit. If you need more highlights, you can erase the area that will give it a little more tooth and then you can go in with your, um, with your white to help blend it and whatnot. Um, all in all though, this was a lot of fun. I am really pleased with how, um, with how this came out. It was fun to create. It was fun to do. I was really impressed with these pencils. They were very slow wearing. I didn't know how I'd be able to uh, overcome having so few pencils to work with, but um, it was a challenge and it was fun. I feel the brain snaps is going and, and uh, all that good stuff. And I think that that's what art should do. You know, you should challenge yourself. Even if you don't end up creating the best art you've ever done, you still challenged yourself and that is really important to do as an artist. And I also like seeing what you get when you layer some colors, like when I was laying, layering this purple in here, it doesn't give me like a, the brown that I thought it would, it gives me a much more lively color. So it kind of leads me to believe that the colors are really pure in here. So, you know, it's definitely a good primary set. So I will put the links to where you can find this stuff at smartartbox.com. This is a January box. They usually do offer these boxes for purchase if there's any left after they send them out to their subscribers. Um, if not, you can always sign up for a subscription and get a surprise box in the mail every month. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up before you go because that really helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.